one of my neighbors said to me, I can't remember which at the time, oh my God, it's like Alcatraz. <laughs> but I don't think it's like Alcatraz. I, I love it. Uh, I really love it. I think it's a very beautiful piece of architecture. It looks like a 70s science fiction film, really. It's like a family house. Big family house. You know, it's a kind of hill town that's in the middle of Swiss cottage. It's like a concrete village. There's no, not going to be any more, I doubt, built like this. A lot of people will see this as some sort of concrete horror that lurches along the back of a rail track. big up the estate can't you so you could say oh we live in a penthouse apartment in a grade two star listed building in St John's Woods which, which is true. It is a unique building at the time it was built it was one of the most progressive it's a model of its architecture even though the architecture is questionable. Pound for pound this is the most expensive building built by a local council anywhere in the world. Well, Alexandra Road is thought of and generally talked about as a housing scheme. Um, and it is mainly housing. But what it really is, is something beyond that. Alexandra Road is a piece of city. I actually came here with my parents um, when I was about 13. Um, we moved into the um, first phase of the development um, back then. I'd actually been here before to visit somebody in a flat years before and thought, what a cool pad. It'd be really nice to live there. And then when I got off at this place, I thought, great, this'll do. So I set about covering the council grey, horrible tiles and the old man's toilet and made it my own. When I was a kid, it reminded me of uh, holiday homes, strangely, I think because of like, everyone had like this garden in front of their, you know, this terrace in front of their uh, flats. It was actually my wife who decided. Uh, she found this place really nice. She said, oh, look, looks like Greece. I was quite shocked. I remember walking down Abbey Road because I'd gone to get the keys up in West Hampstead and I was looking at the tower blocks and thinking, well, it's probably one of those. And I had no idea where I was going. And I just came over the bridge and saw the estate. And it was a good feeling, but it, it, it felt like something from, you know, almost from another planet. And I came with a friend and we went to Abbey Road End and looked up when all the original lighting, when it was brand new. And, I mean, I was absolutely awestruck. I just thought it was the most fantastic place. Daunting and frightening when you first walk on until you get to know the estate. It was... Um scary it was a scary it was it looked so bright and white not like it does now but you, it it just took, took your breath away I just thought it was a really cool space because their flat was empty it meant you could walk around in one big square and there's nothing here it was very minimalist and it got a balcony so it looked a lot bigger and I thought this is great and there's all the lights and the French windows and I like French people in some ways it felt very much like when I first went, my, went to my first um, Arsenal game at the old stadium and um, I just kind of arrived from, you know, you, you kind of come through some, some small terrace streets and then you end up in this kind of amazingly different place of a different scale to anything else around you. It looked like a, a, an enormous concrete crocodile that had been in an accident, covered in scaffolding. It was horrendous. Loved it. 
It's totally different. Never seen anything like it in my life. I felt a little bit like an aquarium ball, you know, it's just a fish ball. I could see my neighbors, my neighbors could see me. Um, but I like the architecture. The idea, as far as we were concerned, was this continuous, high density urban scheme which got its vitality from picking up ingredients which go a long way back um, in English housing history quite distinct from German, French, Italian urban plan, taking that notion of continuity and interpreting that in with modernism. We had a friend came who, who we thought she was joking when she said, oh, this is reminiscent of the terraces of Bath. Right, and we, you know, she was a, an artist. Um, but it is, it's, it's nice and light, it's less, you know, the alternative really, that sort of, horrible, bland, straight council estate. I don't don't like the thought of that, whereas I don't feel so sort of municipal here really. I feel a bit, it feels like it's different, which I like. All right, we're an estate, but it feels like an actual street as opposed to living in a high rise building. One of the key aspects of the design is that everyone has a connection to the street. And that's through the stairs that come up from the street to people's houses, um, the, the terraces they've got overlook the street, um, that it feels like one place. It's big and it's quite dense, yet at the same time it feels quite connected. The design of the architecture is really brutal. It's industrial. This isn't a domestic setting. This is very brutal and very hard, monotone and, 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 and just same, 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 same. So it's boring, and the whole linear thing is boring. I like the fact that all the terraces face inwards, all the staircases face inwards, you have an outer wall on one side, you have an outer wall on the other, and you are explaining the nature of the building on its architecture. But you're so close to people that um, you have to get on with them, and also you do get on with them because you are so close and it kind of um, forces you to understand things a little bit more. I certainly can hear my neighbour, my neighbour can hear me and I can uh, see also the neighbours across the road so we to some degree start participating in each other's lives. People are constantly being defensive about the way they treat their space so they might put up fences or they might put up planting or sort of screen things by putting sort of canopies or all sorts of stuff so you see sort of a little bit of defensive um, design going on. We wanted the curve to follow the railway um, and that was quite an achievement <laughs> and we had the problem of how to do the curve well we were doing concrete walls and so instead of doing walls that are parallel like that we did walls that were wedged if you could choose where to put it, you might not put it beside a railway line, but then the fact is the railway line has probably made the estate what it is. And living here all the years I have, it's a bit like living next to a waterfall. I don't hear the trains. So that it had a street which was like an old-fashioned street, except that it was separated from, from vehicles, separate vehicles and pedestrians, which was part of the planning brief, in any, and in any case, at that scale, it seemed to me to be the right thing to do in any case. And people driving in bloody hell, it's a nightmare. They can't find you, they get, go up Boundary Road, then there's that rotten sign, they get directed down to the little mini island, and then they say, all I can see is a load of garages, where are you? It's a terrifying entrance for, for drivers. Lots of spaces on Railway Way, and you think, what is the point of that? Um, I used to remember sitting down there, when I shouldn't have been sitting down there, <laughs> smoking on the sly when I was a teenager, not, not a good thing. Um, and they used to have, yeah, there was a lot of little spots in little quiet places that you just thought to yourself, Would you, why is that there? It's a long horizontal element. And it just seemed kind of dreary and wrong and difficult to handle, simply just cutting it off on that flame of that end wall. It just seemed impulsively nice to stick it out, um, entirely willful, not functional in any way at all. 
But I remember a meeting that we had when we were under construction. The building was there, it was being built and so forth, and then it was finished. And the builder saying at the end, now I know what that is for. It's for the architect to jump off of when the building is finished. <laughs> Only concrete would do the structure. I love the concrete. I always liked concrete. <laughs> um, not very pretty. I think you either like it or hate it. Very dark and dismal looking. I think it is kind of quite brave and brutal and, you know, we quite love it. It just looks dull. It just looks really dull. I love concrete. <laughs> love it. <laughs> I like it in the sunshine. I hate it in the rain. Again, I sort of think it's, it's, it's quite Mediterranean. It's not that brilliant. And I've never been a big fan of grey. I like it. However, my, my daughter likes to paint, paint it all over. She likes it more colourful, not just grey. It ne needs a good clean. Concrete's concrete. I come from Germany and we have a sort of, I suppose modernist, that's where modernist architecture was really born, Bauhaus. So we have quite, have quite a different attitude to modernist and concrete architecture. They built wooden boards and tipped those concrete into it and each board left a different imprint which is unique it's like a building's dna you know it's just all different colors it's not one nice white or gray it's a mixture of both uh the positive side uh i don't think there is a positive side um, and I think that the way that it's offset by, by the red brick road and by all the planting that people do on their balconies and all the sort of communal planting that's gone on downstairs really, really softens it as well. state like this needs to be maintained and uh, on a regular basis and just looked after. And there's also a product of naivety was that there was a kind of optimism that was not only mine but was shared by other people that the, all of that kind of thing would be properly looked after. I feel quite proud that I should sort of say I live in a grade two star listed building. It makes you kind of, you know, you feel proud of your area, innit? It? Just like one step below the Queen, that's something big, isn't it? I would have preferred it if it hadn't been needed to be listed. If people had been respecting it, I'm talking about builders, um, planners, uh, the people who were doing the repairs. It's good to maintain, I suppose, it makes the council do things in a certain way. It does make things more expensive, I suppose. You know, it's like Hampton Court is a grade two listed building, but this, you know, Hampton Court gets a lot more care than we do. And we live here and nobody lives at Hampton Court. I have a fantastic balcony. Um, it, it isn't a balcony, it's a haven in the summer. And even in the winter, I love it. I hate little balconies that just stick out. Mm. They don't feel as if <clears throat> they feel you have to make the wrong decision to go out. Like, I'm going to go out into my balcony. You want the balcony to be like a room, that it is an extension of the interior. Um, on the other hand, you don't want it to be too enclosed. So the slope of the concrete means that it is both an extension from the room and you can feel an expanse as far as space is concerned. I think it's brilliant. It's south-facing, so you get sun all day long which is fabulous. I mean, all the people get all the sun all the day long. Designing of a, of, of a dwelling in a small amount of space is a puzzle. If you get it right, it looks so automatically right that nobody thinks it's being thought about. Um, but it takes a lot to get it as precise as that.
might be a little bit on the small side and and if you if you have to get away from each other you have you probably have to go out you know because you can hear each other breathe effectively as i said it's really well laid out i think the thing that's really clever about it is you don't get like long corridors that are you know pointless you know that are just connecting room to room you know that the so the circulation areas where you know the, the areas you know like the hall or the bit between the bedrooms they're, they're a size that you, an area that you can use for things so. plus the fact that if you have a living room upstairs the noise that you make on your floor is over your own bedrooms if you have it the other way around with your living room below the noise that you make in the living room is over your neighbors bedrooms so you're containing that aspect of nuisance more within your own dwelling. Um, I can change the, change the space around with the sliding doors as well. So it's a good, good space for me to live in. And I have a memo somewhere or other which says uh, this architect appears to have an obsession with sliding doors and the staircases are the very latest thing from habitat design, not suitable for council tenants. Because it's open space, I think that's good because like, it encourages you to like, sit around together rather than being in separate rooms. Like when my mum was cooking in the kitchen, she's not in a separate room like, locked away cooking to herself. In terms of the living area, I think you know, they've done a fantastic job in, in making the most of, of the space here, putting the living space into the living room and into the bedroom. The kitchen and the bathroom, consequently, are, are much smaller. Yeah, I really despise those brown tiles. I just think they're absolutely hideous. But anything else, and to put a washing machine facility within the one-bedroom flat. So, yeah, if you could change that, that would be perfectly fine. Everyone's a winner. <laughs> um, I would love to have provided enough room in the kitchens for washing machines, but we couldn't do it extra plumbing, extra electricity, and above the, the standard. <clears throat> so that's the kind of thing. Then there's a real question as to whether the architect went too far in doing the concrete worktops and the tiling, because those are my choice uh, about the feeling of the interior. Um, and a lot of people would want to rip that out and just do it their own way. So you tell me how far you go with that kind of thing. Um, I think they look quite nice. Well, I think it's beautiful, and I, I think it's beautiful the way it's stepped back like this. So you always feel the sky. You know, it never feels shut in, ever. And actually, there's often loads of kids playing out on it as well, which is nice, because you don't often see children playing on London streets, so it kind of takes me back to, to my childhood, because I grew up in Dublin, and we always played out on the street. So I'm sure I remember going up the estate one day and it was summer and I think you lot were out and if uh, correct me if I'm wrong but have you done Irish dancing oh yeah anyway you and your sisters or maybe your sisters I can't remember who were on out on the street and there's you've got friends or there's kids who live near you and I think they're Asian kids and then there were other kids who I think are Somali so they were really dark and then the Asian kids are, are brown and then there were you kind of you know London Irish I presume yeah and you were teaching them how to do Irish dancing and it was the most the funniest, br most brilliant thing I've ever seen. It was a real kind of London scene on, on the estate. Am, am I right? I haven't made that up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That was brilliant. So thanks for that. <laughs> that was a great memory. <laughs> I don't think filmmakers necessarily know why they choose this place. I think there's, some, there's a kind of confusion in some ways because it, on the one hand they use it to represent an image of social housing that is negative, that is full of cr criminality and decay. On the other hand, why do they keep choosing this place in particular? I think because it's an incredibly striking building. What always makes me laugh is that the fact that when they come on the estate to make those sorts of films and they perhaps portray the estate in a bit of a negative light, they're always having to do things like strew rubbish around everywhere to make it look awful, you know, throw a few mattresses around. It's quite funny actually because me and my mum were watching a, an old episode of, I think, The Sweeney and um, they were filming on Rowley but they were filming as it was actually being built there was like scaffolding and stuff it was quite weird so it was just probably after that time that we moved in 
Is that floor going to look like that one over there? No, it's going to look like this. This. Um, there was a Spanish family living here. On one summer evening, they all went outside on the balcony and they were all playing real music and singing. And it was lovely. He was absolutely lovely. And then it was a Sunday afternoon, it was quite warm and balmy. Everybody had their windows open and I just sat outside and I thought, why, how amazing. So many different, so many different cultures of music were kind of floating in the air. I thought, wow, how fantastic is this? It's like, it's all here. Good lad. <laughs>